everyone. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Dubert webinar. So today we're going to be looking at how we can get started in Dubert. So basically this is going to act as a getting started guide. So I'm just going to walk you through all the tips and tricks for beginners in Dubert and just kind of show you around the settings and the defaults, all things like that. So let's get into it. So for a quick overview, we're going to learn how to navigate the organization settings. We're going to then manage our defaults and then also configure our CCM dashboard. So our CCM dashboard is going to give us like a good high level view of everything going on within our case management module. So that'll be a fun one. And then I'm also going to show you guys how to manage your case tags as well as add any team members to your account. So basically, if you have a staff or um, a couple different people that your organization or rescue works with, and you want them to have access to your account. I'm going to show you guys how to get all that set up and then choose their permission levels as well. So in our organization settings, we can edit our organization's profile. So um, basically any information about your organization, address, contact information, all things like that. If you have any changes that you want to just update, um, we can also transfer the organization ownership from the organization settings as well. So for example, if the um, organization's leader changes hands, this is when you would want to use that feature to then transfer that organization ownership over to the new owner. Um, we are also able to manage our mapping templates for animal profile uploads in our organization settings as well. So um, if you saw our webinar about uploading animal profiles, then you would be familiar with the mapping templates then that is where we can manage those as well. So just a couple of, couple different ways we can access that. And then we can also manage and um, manage our volunteers and staff from the organization settings as well. So just another way that we can go about finding that as well for that one. Um, managing our defaults and CCM dashboard. With this one, this is gonna be your CCM dashboard right here. This is gonna give you just a high level overview of what's going on within your organization. So we have our case types our animal types, case statuses, and team status right here. So for our case statuses, we can configure this quadrant of six case types that we are most concerned with or most interested in learning about whenever we go over to our CCM dashboard. So we would want to just click on this manage defaults right here, and then we can edit those as well. We can also choose our case types and statuses as well. So if we want to delete them, add them, all things like that, and then go ahead and put them to work within CCM, we can do that through here as well. And when we want to add a team member to our organization account, what they're going to want to do is every team member that you want to add is going to want to head over to dubert.com and create an individual account. And then what is going to happen is that the org owners are going to go over to the partners tab, manage volunteers, and then they're going to add volunteer permissions. So that's where they're going to be able to search your email address that you use to create your individual account. And then they're going to be able to set your permission levels. And then team members, once that um, has been done by the org owner, you're going to want to hop into your email and just accept that invitation email to get access to the organization's account. So I'll show you guys a little bit more about what that looks like once we get into the system. But other than that, that is all I have for our quick slideshow. So now we're gonna jump in the system and I'm gonna walk you guys through all of these different processes and show you some of my favorite tips and tricks for getting started. And I am gonna be demoing in our beta environment. So just in case anything looks a little off or different, that would be why we treat it as a sandbox for demoing and webinars, things like that. So other than that, let's get into the system. Okay, so now I'm logged in to my organization's account and I am the organization owner of this account. So that's why I'll be able to access the organization settings. So I'm gonna head over up here at the top. We have just this little um, icon right here. And then this is gonna be our organization name right here. And then right here we have our organization's account settings. So we're gonna start there and what we're going to see here is a ton of different settings and options. So right here, we have our organization profile right here. We can click on that if we want to edit any information about just our organization itself. We have our transfer ownership option, like I mentioned here, if we ever want to send that ownership over to someone else, if it is changing hands, transport ownership, we can transfer that as well. We can delete our organization profile from right here too. And then down here, if you use the auction features, you have a couple different settings for that. 
We also have importing animal profile options here as well, so we can manage our mapping templates right here. If you saw our previous webinar last week, we uploaded animal profiles to our cases. So that is another way we can access our mapping templates is from just right here. And then we also have uh, the, the ability to manage our volunteer users here as well. So we can add volunteer permissions, block, pending, approved, or view our block list right there. So super easy. Um, organization owners have a, a lot of different setting options to choose from. So um, I hope that kind of helps just to kind of give you guys some ideas of where you can find a couple of these different settings. So now we're going to move into the CCM settings. So I'm going to head over to our companion case management module right here, and I'm going to click on dashboard. So this is our CCM dashboard. So when we want to configure this right here with our case types, we're going to want to basically be able to prioritize which case types we find most important that we want to see whenever we open up this dashboard, because this is great for any executive directors or program managers, all things like that, who are looking for that really high level account of what's going on within their organization. So I highly recommend this page for anyone in a management position. This is going to give you a really good idea of what is going on with your organization. So that is that. So there's two different ways that we can manage our defaults. We can access it from the dashboard right here by just clicking manage defaults. Or if I open up companion case management again, we have managed defaults right here as well. So I just want to point out both ways to get there. So whatever you prefer, but I'm going to go ahead and click on manage defaults from right here. And right here, if you have a new case default that you want to set, we can set that right here. So if you Anytime you create a case that you want the case type to default to, what we can do is just click on this drop down and we can set that. So, for example, we are just going to put in um, rehome, for example, as our default case type. And then we can also choose our default case status. You can also choose one or the other. For example, if you don't want a default case type, but you want a status as like new app or something like that. This is basically a great way to do that or vice versa if you only want a case type, but your case status could vary. You can definitely set that up as well by just selecting one. But I just wanted to show you guys that is one way to go about that. Um, so that'll definitely be a good time saver if it is something that your organization is interested in doing. But then right here we have our case statuses. So basically what these do is kind of tell us the progress of our cases. So we have all these different ones right here. We have some that were created by me and then some we have our system defaults right here. We have a grayed out trash can, means we can't delete them. Um, anything else that we can, we can add a case status right here. So we can add one for new app, for example, and then we'll go ahead and choose our color, we'll do green for that one. So that's how we'll create a case status. And then our case types, you'll notice really similar. We have our trash can right here tells us whether they're system defaults or they were created by me. And then same process for adding a case type right here. So we'll put in a spay and neuter, for example, and we'll click create on that one. So we've created our case types and our case statuses. So that's super easy. And now is our case type quadrant. So this is like I showed you on the organization's dashboard where you can have that six counts of case types. So this is where we can go ahead and configure these based on what we want. So these are also going to line up with the ones on the dashboard. So it's going to go the first three and the second three. So if you have a preference on what order you'd like them in, you can definitely arrange that right here. But for example, if I want to switch this from rehome to, for example, we can do temporary housing. We can do spay neuter, all things like that. So we can make any changes to these that we'd like. So I just changed a couple to show you guys. And then we have the publishing a case default radius. So for example, just a little bit of background information on this. When a case is published to organizations and general public, we send out emails to the Duber volunteers with an active adopter profile, letting them know of the new animal, set your default radius so they know how far they would like it to notify them. So if you choose to use this option, we can set our radius right here. We can set it to zero. We can set it up to 100, whatever you prefer. But anyways, down here we have transferring a case option. So if we ever transfer a case to our coalition members, this is where we'll decide if we want to keep that case open once we've transferred it or if we want to close and archive it. So totally up to you and your organization's processes. But I prefer to close and archive it. Um, and then when you transfer to another organization, what information do you want to share by default? 
So then we can choose here what we want to add. So if we always want to have animal profiles go with the case, we can select that. We also want client details and contact info. We can do that. Tasks and files. That all looks good. So then before you leave this page, you always want to click save on these so you don't lose any of your progress. But that is basically how we can manage a lot of our CCM settings as well as the settings for our dashboard. So once I click save on that, you can see I have a couple updates here in my dashboard and all things like that. And then once you have your team members in here, you start assigning them cases, all things like that. You'll have some team statuses to check out as well for right here. So that leads us into our next topic of how we can add team members to our organization's account. Okay, so to start by adding our team members to our account, what we're first going to want our team members to do is to head over to dubert.com and we're going to go over to this login button right here and we're going to click on that and then we're going to click on create a volunteer account. So then once they click on that, they're just going to follow the prompts, create their volunteer account and confirm their email address and then they will be all set to go. And whatever email address they use, they're going to want to give that to the organization owner. So once they have that in there and they have that volunteer account, individual account created, now organization owners are going to want to head over to the partners tab right here. Click on volunteers and manage your volunteers. And then they're going to click on add volunteer permissions right here. And then once they click on that, what they're going to do is start by just typing in the email address for that team member. And then once they have it in there, they'll be able to just select it, choose the permissions and invite them. So super, super easy. And then what that team member is going to want to do is once that invite has been sent, they're going to want to head into their email and accept the invitation. That's really important to be able to get access to the account. So once they accept that invitation, then they're going to be able to log into Dubert as normal by just clicking this login again, and then using the logins that they created right here. And then once they get into the account, they'll be able to just click on this little um, icon right here again, and your organization will be showing up right here. And then they're just going to want to click on that, and then they'll be taken right into your organization's account. So super, super easy to get going with that. So if you have any questions about that, please email us at help at dubert.com and either any, any of my staff members, team members, all things like that will be able to help you out and get you going in the account. But other than that, that is super easy to get them added. So the next thing I want to show you guys is how to manage our tags. So I'm going to head over into our shortcuts right here and I'm going to click on manage tags. And the great thing about these is that we now have the tag management feature so we can go in here and make edits to any of our tags and also create them. Um, so it depends if you prefer to create them within the case or within manage tags, um, but either way works. There's a couple different ways to do it. But what we can do is create our tags right here. We can create the tag name, the color, all things like that. So we can put one for webinar, just as an example. We'll choose our color, we'll do blue, and we'll click on create. So there, now we can use this case tag in any of our cases. And then we can also pull this into reporting and run reports on specific tags. So that's a really great idea. So now what we're gonna do is just look at how we can edit our tags really quickly. So we have just the edit tag, delete tag right here as well. We can search by our tags. And that's really it for managing our tags. But this is another really good setting that you want to get set up before you hit the ground running in Dubert. So other than that, now we're going to jump back into our slideshow and just go through a quick Q&A. So for our Q&A, our first question is, can I have multiple team members that are organization account owners to access the settings? So that's a great question, but unfortunately right now you can only have one organization owner and only one person who can access the organization's settings. So if that is um, a conflict, what you can always do is just transfer that organization ownership over to that team member who needs it and then just transfer it right back whenever you're done. So that's kind of our workaround that we suggest for any cases like that. And then our next question is, how can I edit the volunteer permissions of my team? So another great question. So what we're gonna do for that is I'll just show you really quickly, hopping back into the system in our partners tab right here, back where we were under manage volunteers, we have the options to view our pending, view approved, view blocked and preferred. So 
if we have anyone in our account that currently has permissions, they're going to be in that view approved list. And then if they have not accepted the invite yet, that's going to be the pending. And then if they were ever blocked from access, then they'll be in the blocked list. So that's just kind of how you can access those and make any changes as you need to. So other than that, that is all I have for our, our Q&A. So thank you guys so much for joining me. And I hope to see you in our future webinar. And for any questions or if you're interesting, interested in scheduling a demo, please feel free to reach out to us at help at And either myself or my team members will be in touch with you. Thanks.